On this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we are modifying a car. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. I know what you want. You want Volkswagen up content, but instead we're bringing you the Yaris. We're it's bringing better. you the mad Yaris. It's because like some people like them. It's like someone took a Volkswagen hey. up and just made it really, really good and all driving turbo. I mean, that's really what we're looking at right here. Don't worry about the Volkswagen up versus Yaris thing. That will be settled on a track in another day. What we're worried about today is the fact that I have a Yaris. There are so many sick automotive aftermarket parts for this vehicle, some of which are laid out in front of us, which I'm just frothing at the chomp to put into my vehicle. Frothing at the chomp. Now, you may have clicked onto this video and gone, what is Mighty Car Mods? I can tell you. It's in the name. It's a mighty car and there's modifications. We're going to modify this car, but guess what, people? I know what you're thinking. You're just going to have a little lazy, chill time, watch some videos, eat some popcorn. <coughs> some... <laughs> no! <laughs> We've only got 48 hours before this car is going onto a truck, into a container, onto a ship, into a train, then into a rocket. Calm, calm down, Elon. It's not, it's not going on a rocket. It's, well, it's going on a truck, and it's going on a truck in two days. That bit's true. If you we have two know. days to do all of this to that. If you must know, it's going on a truck, oh, and it is going on oh, a train. God. And yes, you we are going to get this oh, thing modified. We don't have long to do it. We're going to smash it out. We're just going to pick a mod at a time. We're working together on this thing, and we're just going to make this car extra mad. When these cars first came out, I'd assumed it was just a marketing department's attempt at making Camry seem cool by adding some fruit to a Yaris. I was wrong. The range and choice of mods available for this car in such a short time is incredible. And in the absence of a modern Evo and now even STI, what you're looking at here is about as far from Camry as it gets. And love it or hate it, these things are here to stay and likely dominate the turbo all-wheel drive scene. I waited a little while before I picked out exactly which direction to go. Being track capable without completely ruining it for daily driving is the aim. Lots of the same principles of the last 30 years of modifying a turbo car still apply. Keep it cool, keep the air flowing and optimise where the factory may not have due to their budgetary requirements. Stripping this thing down is easy and in just a few minutes the under trays and front bumper bar come right off. Changing your intercooler to an aftermarket and upgraded intercooler is probably one of the best turbo supporting mods that you can do. It's not just about how this cools down when there's air flowing over it, it's also about how much cooling you can do when you're sitting, say, at the start of a drag strip because you don't want to be heat soaking your balls. Exactly. So if you're about to do some heavy circuit work, which this car is, it's also about recovery. So if you're full boost every gear for like a full 10 minute session, you're going to be pumping a lot of heat from that little turbo through the intercooler to try and get cold air into the engine, which this is going to heat soak. Um, testing has shown that they do heat soak eventually. Pretty good for a factory unit. This is a lot thicker and there's a lot more mass there to help sort of cool it down. So the idea is with an intercooler upgrade like this, you can uh, you can prevent that heat soak. You can get much bigger by the way. You can get ones that are absolutely massive uh, for the kind of power level we're making and for the idea of a turbo supporting mod on the otherwise factory car. This is going to be awesome. And as a bonus, it's super easy to install. So Martin, they don't get these in America. They don't get the Yaris in America, but I'm pretty sure ETS is actually an American brand. How's that work? It's distributed locally by Lamb Speed, but it's like a American. I think they send the, I guess they have a factory in a cooler and they just make it and check for just dimensions. It, it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, this is, this is an easy bolt in, man. Yeah, yeah. Super easy. So but is the fact they don't get these in America why everyone's frothing on GR Corolla? 100%, because they're going to get a, a big crap load of three cylinder 1.6 litre yeah. engine. So the en engine development will go nuts. Like we will see 1,000 horsepower three cylinders. It's going to happen. All wheel drive, five door. Yeah. What do you, I mean, you get what, an S3, an RS3, a Golf R. What other options are there now? I I30N. Yeah, I guess so. Not all wheel drive. Would you go GR Corolla or Golf R? I'll tell you what I would do on three. One, two, three. Golf Corolla. R. Golf R. In a heartbeat. I don't like Corollas, man. Why would you have a Corolla when you can have a two-door version of the Corolla that's smaller, lighter, with the same engine? Basically, because it's the got same more engine. doors. It looks better. Looks better. It's obviously a Golf R competitor. This better. is not a competitor Golf R, is it? Not really. This is more. No. Th this is like made to be thrashed, not made to be nice. 
The intercooler fits directly to the factory piping which is kind of small but it's totally fine for stock boost. Next up for our cooling mods, we're installing our brake ducts. These are factory brake cooling ducts. They take air from the front of the car and spray it towards the discs to help the brakes stay cool under extreme heat. Stock base models, which is what this is, don't come with them, but it does have a provision and a spot for them. And that means all you have to do is chop out the guard liner where Toyota have conveniently left you an imprint. You can chop it with a Stanley knife or scissors. And if you want it to be super accurate and look pretty, make sure you take the guard liners off first. All you've got to do is chuck a couple of bolts in. I think you can buy the bolts or you can just grab whatever. I actually stole these from Yaris Hilton, which I think is very appropriate. So they are in fact Yaris bolts. And then it just bolts straight onto there. You cut the original guard liners. You don't need new ones, which is awesome. You bolt these up, you put the bar back on and you have air spraying onto the back of your brakes. We still have to chop out the blanking plates on the front bumper bar, but otherwise this mod is done. We've got gas coming in. Now we need to get it out. Next up on the Yaris, it is a HKS Super Turbo exhaust. Was the fact it's called Super Turbo a massive part of That's why That's the I only it? reason why you bought it. It's and now we're going to try and find some features as to try and legitimize why we bought it. We only bought it they and we mean him because it says Super Turbo. They reduce back pressure and increase performance and they flow. You and, get and a more throaty mandrels. sound at the performance element. We're going from a two and a half inch to a three inch pipe with high, high flow Strio mufflers for course, extreme stainless. performance. Super light, weight saving, yeah, even though it's heavier. Not light. Not light and what weight saving. So a lot of Yaris exhausts out there, aftermarket ones, they flow way better. They're lighter, but they are so freaking loud. And I think that little three cylinder sounds amazing, but I think with basically no exhaust on it, it doesn't sound amazing anymore. I purposely chose this. It looks like a it, Do you know what it looks like? Thrower. It looks like something that I would catch a ghost with. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like you point it over there, like you hear a ghost <laughs> coming, he pops out and he's like, <laughs> and you go, <laughs> ah! you get him, you know? Um, lucky we have no special effects to actually make stuff come out of there. Imagine that. Imagine how good that would be. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, it looks amazing. It looks really good. So anyway, this is the little back section. That's the front section. It comes with a bunch of mounts. A uh, good tip for Yaris owners is apparently um, exhausts fall off Yaris as it tracks under extreme cornering and G-forces. The undercarriage so bounces around a lot. You should, uh, you should consider heavier duty mounts, which this comes with. It also comes with this bracket. I've absolutely no idea what this does, but we're about to find out. Probably helps support this heavy exhaust. It's not heaps heavier than the factory one, but it's not a weight saving. Um, it's just mostly for sound and cool factor as well. The tips look pretty awesome, so keen to get this on the car. Uh, proof of car's performance ability from the factory already is what the Yaris and the Golf did at the track. They're fast times, they're good times, they're doing really well. And some people go, oh, you know, the future of car modding is kind of boring. There's still going to be people doing like really intense, all sorts of crazy stuff, some of which you're going to be seeing soon. But also the reality is a lot of people just want to bolt some stuff on, make their car go better, sound better. And, and this is a perfect case of that. Yep. HKS, really good quality, yep. looks great, it'll sound good. We bolted on and most importantly having a fun time what together I love about, what I, one of the things i love about this car is that it's like less than two years old and all this awesome stuff exists for it there's heaps of choice from cheap expensive lightweight heavyweight it's about sound it's about performance there's just all these options already and this car's been out for basically no time mm. it's really really cool so let's see what it looks like old one let's rip it off throw it in the bin then put this one on The best tool in the world. Oh my God, that's a game changer. All right. Wow. Hey Martin, go on, say it. Where's this going, Martin? At the scrap metal recyclers. No, go on, Martin. In the it. bin! One of my favorite things about buying JDM parts is the instructions, which are almost always, oh, you know it, <laughs> completely in Japanese. Here we go. Um, there's our exhaust. See what it says. I like how the instructions are just, please read it. But the problem with that is anyone who's not going to read it would never see the instruction to read it anyway. A lot of it might just be the Japanese version of TOOF. I'm so stoked with how that looks. Look at it, it looks so tough. And you're not losing out by having a crazy loud thing that's gonna drone down the highway. That should sound really, really nice. 
Sick. The exhaust is on, it looks amazing. And now is a good time to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Mighty Car Mods. With our Mighty Car Mods fender covers, these come as a twin pack and just for you and for a limited time, add these to your car and we're gonna include a free gift absolutely free for you. Check it out now at MightyCarMods.com. There's a link down below. Grab some for your car and thank you for supporting the show. Now back to the mods. Next up, we are doing an intake. I'm using an MST intake which uses a pod filter but comes with an enclosure that takes advantage of the cold air feed from the front grille. Turbos like cold air. It's better for making boost and it burns more efficiently. There's no real downside except maybe noise which I also see as an advantage on this angry little three banger. Brand new. So, so clean. The intake piping being on the back of the engine makes it a little hard to get to, but the kit replaces all the factory hoses with hard pipes and silicon joiners. These are then secured to the enclosure that sits in the factory position. Intakes in, yep. looks mad. Yep. Now the best bit, we have a listen to it and see what it sounds like. No, we don't. We see with our ear no, holes. We don't. Because there's an eyeball in my ear canal and it's looking at you when you <laughs> whisper to me and you say, hello, I'm watching you. Oh God, that got so weird. We're not going to hear it yet. We're going to save it because there's a few more mods to do and I'm going to save that. Yeah, I'm going to save it. That's a stupid idea, but uh, whatever. Next up, we are going to throw on this oil cooler. Yes, it's not a huge oil cooler. It's also an oil cooler that has a thermostat in it, much like what we put on my little K-truck, only this is probably going to work better than it did on my K-truck because this car actually needs it. Why do you need it? On a daily driver, you don't need it. If you're going to the track, you're getting it really hot, you're hitting the diner, you're doing drag runs, you're doing all sorts of crazy stuff like that. You want to keep your oil temps down because oil works better when it's under an optimal operating temperature heat range. Very good, Martin. I think that's right. <laughs> Hashtag look at the technical info in the description. <laughs> so this is a really simple kit. It's just a little kit. It's kind of neat. That's the bracket that bolts onto there. We either cut or just delete this. We put the oil cooler in. We've got some lines. We use this sandwich plate that goes on the oil filter. Basically where the old oil filter is, that's going to go come out. New that's going to go. That one's going to go Click on, on the thing that Marty just broke pipes in there. So it only starts to route all through once it gets up to the appropriate temperature. Oh, because it's got a solenoid, doesn't Thermostat. it? Thermostat. Thermostat. Oh, that, that's going to open up. You can up. actually oh, here it see is. it in yeah, there. Cool. So it works exactly the same way as one in your radiator. When it gets to a certain temperature, it pops open and lets oil flow through the cooler. We're also going to like do a few tricks with pre-filling and whatever, but the fact that the, co the cooler goes like this means it will be pumped in and out as necessary. So let's bolt it on. Very, very simple. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, I'm sorry, right. man. Wait a minute. What's going on? I'm just trying to get these things behind. And I... oh, thank you. Ah, oh, wow. oh, man, wow. I've just got loose fingers today. Wow. Here you go. Ah, thank you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> what's, what's going okay, on? you saw me do it that time, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> right on. Oil is the lifeblood of your engine, and if you get an oil cooler wrong, you could kill your car. When you're installing an oil cooler, you always want to make sure that you add extra oil to account for the extra capacity from both the lines and the cooler itself. Keep your cooler out of the way of potential damage like rocks and Honda Civics, because it's not much different to having a hole in your block if the cooler gets damaged. Oil will find its way out under pressure until there's no oil left, and then you're metal on metal and not in a good way like Pantera and Megadeth. Last step of this oil cooler kit is a new oil filter. I've got a genuine Toyota one. Interestingly, it comes pre-lubed from the factory, so you don't have to put oil in it. You do need to, when you do oil coolers, think about pre-filling. This is a whole extra system that's empty, currently has no oil in it. The filter has no oil either. If they go that way, you can often pre-fill them, which sort of helps. This way, we're only gonna get a couple of million, so I'm not gonna bother. But what we are gonna do is when we first sort of crank it up, we're gonna make sure the car doesn't start, disable coils or injectors or whatever it is, and just crank it so we can get lots of oil pressure and lots of oil flow through there make sure our level's right and put a whole new helping of oil in there also. While Marty's getting his oil cooled, I'm going to install some white line lowering springs into the back of this nugget. 
The spring and shock absorber are separate, so it's literally just one bolt and some leverage to get the old ones out and the new ones in. So recently we did a video where we installed a sway bar on this before we did a tarmac rally sprint. We were going to do um, springs at the same time, but we wanted to see a couple of things. We wanted to see how the car would handle with its stock springs, also what kind of benefits we'd get from just doing the sway bar upgrade. But now um, we're just gonna do it because there is a, there is a lot of gap uh, with these from factory, so we're just going to replace them with some white line springs. These are a fairly mild drop, uh, kind of similar to the level that we did recently with the Mark 8 Golf R. It's approximately a 25 mil drop. Um, it's really easy to change the springs on a Yarrett. It is, I'll show you what he's holding them in. That, that is it. So the Golf, there was all sorts of sensors and covers and all sorts of stuff going on. This is a really, really quick change. Of course, at the front, it's going to take a little bit more time, so we'll do that together. But I'm just going to grab these springs, throw them in, and then we will move up to the front. Front shocks come out easily with just a few bolts holding them in and our new springs fit perfectly in place of the stock ones. There's only a few more jobs left to do but first we're going to head to Super Cheap Auto to grab some supplies. We need your fancy oil first. Yes. Hey bro. Hey mate. You're the YouTubers. Hello mate. And you did the Hilux video and I bought a Hilux the other day. Did you? <laughs> you bought awesome. a Hilux? Sick. Unreal. <laughs> That's awesome. I was watching I was like oh how old can I do? I found this video and then... Uh, That's unreal. Awesome. Yeah, have a good one. Do you want to be on the YouTube? Hell yeah, I do. Drive shout out someone out, make their day. Um, a shout out to Dan Bath, been my best mate since year five. What a legend. Since year five, that's Love a it. long time. Got it. We're all obtained. I want to buy something we don't need. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah, sure. Look how big that one is, man. Huge. 10 litres. That's good. That's like one Commodore or five Daihatsus. I know we're meant to be buying things we don't need, but do you know what we do need? The Hilux yeah. repair manual. Definitely. Because there are more Hilux mods coming. I know you're here for Toyota Yaris, but we're here for Toyota Hilux. <laughs> meant to be buying stuff we don't need. Yeah, but we, well, we need this. That's oh, look awesome. at, oh, it bends open. Yeah. And, and then, then it extends. It, like, on the oh, that's and cool. We kind of need them on the hoist too. Like that on the hoist would be mad. We should do something like that as well. Oh, like on either side of the hoist? Yep. Hello. Well, in that on case, hello. <laughs> one for the front, one for the back. Yeah. He clips. Yes. Time. What's that for? The blue car I just bought. Of all the things in here, this is what we don't need. Are you ready? The 12 <laughs> volt portable espresso maker. Are you because sure that's what that is? Isn't it? Or do you think it's a light? It looks like a torch. Kind. Yeah, a special torch. Um, no, because Marty and I don't drink coffee, so we don't need this. So should we get this? Should we try it? Maybe and our first coffee we ever drink should be out of that. Really? Yeah, do you reckon? Or, um, what yeah. kind of coffee should we get, coffee or nerds? Or we just give it away. It accepts <laughs> pod and ground coffee, whatever that means. It makes 50 mils of espresso. Is espresso coffee? Yes. Is it? When you squash it in, the, you turn the little, put water through the little grain. You can have adapter pressure. for pod and ground. Okay. Cool. I don't know what that means, Martin, but it's durable. And it's 12 volt DC. We're gonna take this camping and we're gonna drink a coffee. It's gonna be zinging. Oh, what about a Zing solar charge energy. controller? That'll be awesome in the shed. A what? <laughs> That's a mad haul. You got some special things there. Oh, Martin, people are, are people are we, about we to find tell out. them no, they don't, they don't know yet, but they're gonna soon. They're gonna know How soon. about this? There's, we, we got something big happening. And you don't even know what's behind the camera. Oh. You don't even know about this, because we haven't told you about that yet. Have we, Martin? No, nah, and they're not gonna know you. Ah, my trolley's running off. Ah! The Yaris is about to get its first gutful of new oil. It hasn't even made it to its second service yet, and we're already putting some new oil in it. In this case, Castrol Edge 020. It's what it says on the oil cap. It's also what it says in the book. Now, you can change the grade depending on what you're doing with the car. The reason is 
That's quite thin. 020 is quite a thin oil, um, and it's not unusual in modern engines to see that. Now, one of the considerations you have to keep in mind is a thing called low speed pre ignition. So, you know, when you see people driving their cars and they're obviously in the wrong gear, they should be in third, they're in fifth, and they nail it, and it's like the car hesitates and shudders and has a crap time. Sometimes you can hear it pinging. Um, basically, don't drive your car like that. But in modern engines, particularly high performance ones, particularly direct injected and all those other things, it can be an issue. Now, manufacturers do use this oil to sort of um, to try and help with that as well by not having too much resistance on the engine. If you're tracking it really hard, I have been told by people that have been successful with track car Yaris's that they go up to say like a 530 and that's better. This is still a street car, even though it's set up for the track at the moment. It's going to do a little bit of track work, but it's not a race car. Race car, think about it, do your research. Um, but this is what I'm going to put back in. It should protect it nicely. Also, because we've got this uh, new oil cooler set up, I am going to be cranking it and making sure that we get good oil pressure before we actually start it. This engine takes around 4.3 litres to fill. The oil cooler and lines bump that up to just under 5 litres, and you need that extra oil in there so it doesn't take away from the oil pickup's ability to feed the pump when the cooler is full. I've cranked it a bit without the coils connected just to make sure there's oil pressure going through the system. The light's gone off, I can't hear any ticking noises or anything bad. That oil cooler will only open when it's got temperature, so I'm going to have to start it and idle it and sort of let it do its thing before it's going to completely fill up. I've also worked out the extra capacity that's required for both the cooler and the engine, so now we're at about five litres of oil capacity. So it's got that exactly in it, which looks a little bit high on the stick, but once that opens, it should be perfect. If you install the performance brake ducts that you can order and buy directly from Toyota, they need to be fed air from somewhere. And Toyota, very conveniently, has made these sections here. Now, normally you would think that maybe you've got to get an angle grinder or something and cut them out, but they've already pre-perforated this section. So I'm pretty sure that I'm just going to be able to go around here and snip this, and then this piece should just pop straight out, and that will feed air through our mad ducting straight into our brakes. This is a Ryobi power file, also known as a file sander. Um, it's one of those tools you look at and go, I don't know what to use that for until the moment arrives where it's legitimately the perfect tool for the job. We just cut out these factory blanking plates that Toyota put in here so that we can run our mad brake ducts on our mad Yaris. And you end up with these little sort of dags hanging out. So you cut it with uh, some side cutters and then you end up with these. This will make short work of Perfect. These are really popular in panel shops, either air powered or battery, um, for doing sort of fine detail sanding, getting angles right, and also just cleaning up edges. I use them for plastics. That's when they come into their own, and also I guess woodwork as well, but I don't do woodwork because I like cars. Uh, but this is an excellent thing, perfect for a job such as this. It's now time to tidy up our front bumper, slap it back onto the car so we can reattach everything underneath it. Then we can move on to brakes, wheels, and tires. This is a genuine Toyota Gazoo Racing engine cooling undercover. What you can see is going on here, this is the factory one, the undercover, and this one has a bunch of vents. They, it all starts under here, grab a bit of air from in there, and then spray it up. Now where is it spraying? It's spraying onto transfer case, I'm pretty sure, um, up the front and also engine and gearbox and all the stuff that gets hot. So apparently they noticed some uh, temperature issues under very, very heavy driving. And so this was something they come up with to try and uh, fix it. I just think it looks cool. I also like that it's a Toyota part. It's not cheap. It's like two, three hundred dollars. I guess that's a lot, but also it's a factory Toyota thing that you can buy from Toyota. Which means it should just ducks. fit perfectly. It'll fit perfectly yeah. that. It'll use all the original hardware. It's not this like, you know, um, bolt-on kit type arrangement that we so often come across. So it's a simple thing, but it'll keep some temps down. I just think it's a cool mod. Yep. Um, and if this was, you know, we're 20 years in the future and you found one of these secondhand, you'd be like, oh my God, it's amazing, it's a part. So that's... Again, like I've been saying with this Yaris, it is so much fun. It's a Lego it really car. Heaps of it just makes, it just makes lots of sense. I'm being won over slowly, particularly now kind of seeing what's gone into it. There's a lot of thought that's gone into making the car what it is. Mm. And this, again, like I've been saying, why wouldn't you? Yep. Why wouldn't you, if cool. you had the spare $200 dues, why wouldn't you just go, you know what, 
take off the 530 clips holding that one on and just put this on. Why wouldn't you? 529 clips, which is what always happens. Well, because we broke some. Of course. Yes. All right, let's go. The stock braking system on this car is actually incredible for something you can buy off the factory floor, but there are a range of aftermarket options that you can use to sort of tweak towards the direction you want to go. In my case, track use. These are e-leagues. They work really, really well. I've also got a set of titanium backing plates, which are pretty cool as well, just sort of to protect the rest of the braking system from all the heat and dust and crap that goes through there. So basically, we take out the factory pads and install them in place. Bed them in, ready to go. The front brakes on the Yaris are 356 millimeters and 294 millimeters on the back, which is pretty big for such a small and light car and shows what Toyota were going for with this mad little nugget. This clip and pin that holds the pad in is easy to change quickly and there's a massive range of pads available to suit different uses. The pistons just require a small shove with a wind back tool to make room for the new pads, which slots straight in. The factory discs are well up to the task of some track days, even though more aggressive pads may wear them out more quickly. Next up, we're installing some hub rings to suit the mad new wheels that I've found. We have cranked out a whole lot of mods on this little Yaris. It's probably been a whole long day worth of mods, um, but a lot of progress. Front mounts and oil coolers and brake pads and intakes and exhaust and just all sorts of mad modifications. Why wouldn't you, Martin? Why wouldn't you? That's what I'm saying for today. Why wouldn't you? But next up, it's time to complete the picture with the W and the R from the Wreck-It wheels and rubber. Uh, we're also doing wheel nuts, so double W. Uh, this is a Toyota wheel nut. They seem to like this style, I don't know why, like with a shank on it and then a washer and whatever, but most aftermarket's wheels will not play nicely with those. So we have a set of these. Um, they're actually titanium wheel nuts, which is pretty awesome, from Lamb Speed, who supplied a couple of these parts. And look at that, it's super light um, and really, oh, wow. really strong as well. So that will fit because it's got the right kind of tapered seat that go in our wheels. Awesome, let's have a quick chat about tyres. One of my favorite bit of modifying cars when you put in all your mad mods like your suspension and your sway bars and your brakes and everything is finally installing your mad new wheels. This is a set of secondhand Advan RC3s. They are legit rally wheels. They're what people put on rally cars. Uh, the stud pattern suits late model Subarus, also Evos, so you see quite a lot of them. The Yaris has a really friendly uh, setup to put wheels like this on, so they're pretty awesome. Um, 18 by I think nine or eight and a half. Either way, perfect for a 245-40Z18, which is what we've got in Michelin Part Sport Cup 2s. Put on our mad new titanium wheel nuts, and then we're ready to lower this onto the ground and see what it looks like. It's very, very exciting. You know what else is exciting? Unlike a vag wagon, this car has studs. Studs. So you can actually put your, put your wheel up there and have a look. Martin, stand back and have a look. See what you think. I actually think that looks pretty damn good. Yeah, I'm into it. I mean, gold wheels, I'm not usually that huge on. I mean, it looks good on my Tudor STI. That's kind of more of a bronze. Uh, but this is also the factory finish, and these do have like a lot of protection on there. It's quite an quite a extensive paint job they give them. So it's a good quality wheel. They were probably one to one and a half thousand dollars cheaper than buying a set of whatever everyone puts on these works or SSRs or whatever, um, because I did get them secondhand, but they're also a lightweight wheel, which is pretty, pretty good and perfect for what I'm trying to do with it and fits this particular tire. Perfectly awesome. How much were these, Martin? I think including a set of Pilot Sport 4s that came on them. Yep. It was about two and a half grand. Yeah, okay. So say the tyres are worth a thousand bucks secondhand. I think that's pretty good buying. Martin, um, speaking of your two-door SDI, mm. this here, assuming your two-door SDI wasn't blown, this here would smash the pants off it, wouldn't it? Badly. Badly. Oh, yeah, it would absolutely destroy that's it. That's embarrassing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, just, wanted, just, just wanted to clarify old, that that was embarrassing. It's old and underpowered, basically. But that's, that's fixable, of course. How about the car, though, mate? All right, before we do anything else, it's time to have a listen to the Mad Mods. That has been a mad bunch of mods on the Yaris, and like I've been saying all day, why wouldn't you? Mighty car mods, it's what we do. Anyway, I'm really happy with how that turned out. I think I took a bit of a gamble on the wheels, just sort of guessed at some specs and hoped it would work. Um, second handies off the internet, turned out really, really good. My tires are slightly wider now at 245 instead of 225. Yes, I'm trying to gain a bit of an edge at the track. Still got stock power. So, trying to get an edge over who or what, mate? Never you mind. Um, anyway, so it, it is going to have to go for another alignment before it goes to the track, but yeah, in about two hours, uh, it just has to be completely ready to go on a truck and it's going somewhere very special. We will take you along for the You flight. know what I'm going to say? The combination of that HKS exhaust and that MST intake, it sounds bullissimo. It sounds 
that proper, there's such a long sustain and decay on the whoosh. Yeah. It's, it's yep. cool, factory, it's really cool. Factory blow off valve. So again, those mods don't necessarily make big power. They might free up a little bit of power here and there, but in terms of what the car's mapped for, it's not gonna make big power. We're not adding boost or anything, but what we are getting is a bit more enjoyment from the sound of it. And yeah. I mean, that's huge. You know, it, it was so quiet before. Yeah, and yeah. now it's just got that like nice, little bit, of, nice all, little bit look, of sound. There's a lot of things that have been upgraded on it. Plus it gets things ready. It is staging the platform for more things to come if Martin so chooses. But there it is. Yep. Uh, you will be coming with us on this exciting adventure because like I said, this is this is going on a rocket. Somewhere, somewhere it's special. It's gone somewhere very exciting. Uh, and you will be coming with us. If you do want to support the show, we really appreciate everybody that grabs a sticker or a t-shirt or a lanyard or something for their it's car. It's sent from right here um, to your door. It's, it's sent from right here in Sydney, Australia, directly to your door. You can check all that stuff out at mightycomods.com. We don't have other companies uh, sending it out like it is done by us and our mates from right here. So we really appreciate anybody that has grabbed something and anybody that's about to. And, and whether, now, you're, whether you're modifying your Corolla, your Commodore, your i30, your Pulsar, your whatever Volkswagen it is, your Camaro, up. your Volkswagen, yeah, Volkswagen, of course, Volkswagens, your Audis, your BMWs, your Minis, like whatever it is, um, the vibe is the same. There's even some weird beard Peugeots out there. There's some weird beard Peugeots and Renaults like out there them. as well. I like them. I've met a few of them. They're lovely fellas. Yeah, I think they are too. Um, but yeah, the true joy comes from just actually getting your hands dirty and, and, and doing it with your mate in your mad shed in this case, which, which I'm very, very happy to have. Super Garage is just awesome. It's made this so quick for us. Easy to show you what's going on. Easy on the old back and uh, very, very cool. So yeah, wheel alignment on a truck. Boom, you're coming with us for the next chapter of the Toyota you, GR Yaris. You know what I will say as well about working on your car with stuff? Sometimes it can seem intimidating, even just doing something simple like changing your oil or doing a simple mod to your car. But a lot of what I think we're missing is just some human connection, people. Wash a car, learn about the two bucket method. It's a video that we did. And you know what? Invite a bunch of friends over, people you haven't seen for a while, maybe reach out to someone that you know that you used to know from school or uni and go, hey, do you want to just wash a car? Oh, and yeah. just bring them over mm. and go, you know what? I'll bring the buckets, you bring some polish, I'll bring the, and just hang out. Put some tunes on, wash your cars, get a kebab and just hang out. Because that is actually what it's all about. Having a better car is one thing, but actually being able to just do something with your mates and hang out and check in on everyone, see how they're going. Lots of mental health stuff going on, lots of crazy stuff in the news. Just turn, just turn the news off, turn the internet off for a while, including us, if you want to. Just turn it off for a while and just hang out with a mate. Except now you said kebab and I'm not going to get it out of my mind. Yeah, so can we, can <laughs> yeah, we, yeah can of we, course. All right, all right thanks everyone. Bye.